Good morning, first graders. This is Miss Broyhill bringing you your art lesson for this week. Uh, we are going to be making, uh, it's called Japanese scroll art. And scroll art um, started um, back in Japan uh, thousands of years ago. And before that, um, if you've ever seen a scroll, a scroll, you might have seen it in um, maybe some pirate stories where um, the pirate was looking for the treasure and he had a scroll uh, of the map of where the treasure was. So it was rolled up and it had a piece of wood holding the rolled up edges in it and he would unroll it to look where the treasure was and then roll it back up. So that's kind of where we get the scroll part from. And so I, I thought maybe you might know about <clears throat> pirates and their and their hidden treasures and scroll. So that way you will know what a scroll is. So in Japanese art, scroll art is made so it's a whole lot easier to carry around instead of just having a big piece of paper. Uh, it's easier to roll it up. So that's one of the reasons that we have scroll art or Japan, the Japanese culture uh, started having that. So it was easier to carry their art around is to roll it up uh, like a scroll. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to uh, have a long piece of paper and I put punch two holes at the top because we will hang our scroll art from a string. So that's the way the Japanese culture started doing scroll art. And uh, with Japanese art, as with any art, uh, we always make art that ha that has to do with something in our life, things that we see in our life and things that uh, we like. So in Japanese culture, you will see certain things in their art that you might not see in any other art. Uh, so one thing about uh, Japan is it's an island, and an island is surrounded by water. So naturally, you would uh, might see some birds or some fish uh, in their artwork. And we will see a certain bird in their artwork called a crane. Uh, he lives around water. He's always hunting fish. And uh, one of the um, things about Japan is uh, there's a volcano in Japan called Mount Fuji. And a lot of artists would put that in their artwork. Um, and you might actually see a dragon. Uh, a dragon in Japanese art symbolizes power, so you may see that in their artwork. You may see um, some cherry blossoms on the trees, which are very beautiful. They are pink in the springtime, so you see a lot of the cherry blossoms or the cherry trees in Japan art. Um, you might see, if you had me in kindergarten, you might remember when we painted the Japanese bridge. Uh, of course, that's the bridge that's like an arch. So I think I'll add that to my Japanese scroll art. Uh, you might also see um, some uh, of these uh, people that perform with swords. They're called samurais. And you might see some of that in their Japanese art. You might also see uh, a geisha girl. Uh, in Japanese art, which if you've ever seen the movie Mulan, then you know what I'm talking about, a geisha girl. Uh, and the geisha girl and the uh, samurai usually wear this uh, special uh, costume called a kimono. You might see some of the, they actually even make, make art from kimonos because they're so beautiful. But I'll teach you about that in another grade, but they're, it's pretty neat how you can take a robe or a kimono and hang it on the wall because it's so beautiful and use it as art. But anyway, you might also see uh, the symbol, which is their flag, which is a red circle. And Japan has been nicknamed uh, the country uh, of, the red, of the red sun. So you might see that in their artwork. Now in Japan, they do not, uh, they have art about four hours a day. They learn how to paint their symbols which represent their words. So uh, they have to learn how to paint that. So you will see symbols painted and instead of going from left to right like we write in America, you will see they write from top to bottom and they paint their symbols or their letters, uh, unlike American uh, culture. So uh, another thing that you might see uh, in Japanese artwork 
from a famous Japanese artist called Hakasa is called the wave. And that's exactly what it looks like is a great big wave. I will try to attach these images uh, to a document for you guys to look at so you'll know what I'm talking about too. Um, so I'll get those to you along with the video so you actually see what they look like. Um, I'm trying to think of what else is in Japanese culture that we can add to our Japanese scroll art. Um, I think that's about it. I um, might leave something out, but when I'm when I'm drawing, I'll remember it. So with your long piece of paper, we're going to be doing a landscape in our Japanese artwork. So I'm going to do three hills, and you know a landscape is a picture of the land. I'm going to do one, two, three hills, and it's kind of like a rainbow. I'm using markers, but you guys can use whatever art supplies you have. I prefer markers, and to ensure that if you mess up, you can start out in pencil first. That way, if you mess up, you can erase it. But you know, when you've got markers, you can erase it, so choose wisely. So I'm going to start with heel number one, heel number two, and heel number three. All right, so I've got my heels in. I'm going to do a red sun. Whoops, uh-oh, picked up pink. All right, we will, since I don't have a red marker, and I don't know why I don't have a red marker, we'll just go with the pink, and we'll just pretend that it's red because I don't have any with me, guys. So there's my red sun. Uh, at the top of the hill, I'm going to draw a volcano, which is Mount Fuji in Japan. And like I said, I don't have red. I don't know why I didn't pick up red. I got a pink Mount Fuji today, and that's okay. Um, we'll come on down on this hill. I am going to draw my cherry tree, which if you had me in kindergarten, you remember how we start drawing trees. We draw a capital Y, then we do an extra uh, limb, and we call that the chicken claw. Then you can add a couple more little branches just by flicking it out and the cherry blossoms I'm just going to do a plus and an X kind of like snowflakes to represent my cherry tree in bloom with the blue, pink blossoms I think I'm running out of pink marker okay so there's my cherry blossoms um, let's come on down here kind of toward the bottom and I'm going to draw the Japanese bridge that um, we did in kindergarten. I hope you remember it, but if you weren't in my class, you might not remember the Japanese bridge. I'm gonna put a little pond down below it. I'm gonna let the water out of the pond come down to the bottom and create a wave. If you've ever been to the beach, you know what waves are. So this is gonna look similar to the wave that I'm gonna show you in another document from the artist Hakusai. So there I have added a little bit of Japanese art to my Japanese scroll art. So there's the wave. Um, oh yeah, I remember what I forgot to talk to you about. In Japan they have, their buildings are called pagodas. If you've ever been to a Japanese restaurant and there's one in Boone, um, it is shaped like a, it is a pagoda. It's a special kind of house that they have in uh, Japan. It's super easy. Once I draw it, you'll recognize it, but I will have it, have pictures of it in a document for you guys. Um, so I'm gonna put uh, my pagoda right here. It's easy to draw. Draw a rectangle. Then I tell my first graders, there's draw a mustache. Then draw another rectangle, put another mustache. This is the roof actually. And then put an arch, put a couple of windows. There's usually something that looks like an antenna on top, and the doorway is an arch too. So you guys may have seen those before, um, but they're called pagodas. Uh, pagodas, it's hard to say. So I've got, um, oh, I forgot the crane. I uh, don't have a black marker with me. I'll just use this dark blue. And you know when you draw birds far off in the distance, you just put a little V. So we'll say that that is the crane. Uh, next, um, you know, I talked about the uh, samurai and the geisha girl. Um, a samurai, he has a sword because they perform. They do really nice performances with their swords, and it's really neat. And they, they've been studying this for thousands of years, so it's really neat. 
and they um, they do it for, for performances. So here on the side, I'm going to just going to draw a samurai sword. If you want to draw the samurai holding his sword, you can do so. That's totally up to you. This is just part of Japanese culture that I wanted you to learn about. We have got uh, the geisha girl. She usually carries around a little fan in her hand, and it's kind of shaped like a triangle. So I'm going to put a little fan right here to represent my geisha girl. The only thing I have not drawn is uh, my name inside uh, a rectangle vertical. Remember we talked about they they uh, they draw the, they write their names. Uh, vertical up and down unlike us so inside a rectangle oh that looks much better anywhere on your scroll art draw a skinny vertical rectangle and put your name inside of it up and down feels kind of weird writing your name up and down especially for a first grader because you've been trained to go from left to right so uh, make sure you get your name in a little rectangle on your paper the only thing that I've not included is a dragon and I know a lot of you guys like dragons. So um, we don't have a whole lot of room unless you do a whole dragon on your scroll art, which is okay. Um, I usually uh, have the dragon very small on my paper, obviously. And really a dragon is kind of like a, a snake with legs, horns, and wings. So we'll think of it like a snake. And I'm going to have it where I'm like viewing it from looking down on it. Like when we um, when we made our alligators uh, out of paper, you know how it we were viewing it, our perspective was from looking down on it if it were on the ground. So I'm going to do the same thing with my dragon. So um, I wanted a red dragon, but I don't have red, so I'm just going to go with a pink dragon. So I'm going to start out drawing a snake and since I ha don't have a whole lot of room I can't put a whole lot of details um, I'm gonna put the legs with some claws uh, let's throw let's put some scales on his back we can put in a couple of triangular wings on here he has horns he will be breathing fire. Oh, this is a good location. It's going right toward the um, volcano. Eyes, nose, um, put a couple more in there. That's an easy way you can draw a dragon if you want a dragon in your scroll art. Um, I don't think I've left anything out. After you draw it, hopefully in pencil so you don't mess up, trace your lines with markers if you have markers. Um, or if you, if you just have crayons, just trace them. You can color in between the lines with crayon. I have no problem with that. If you wanna make it more colorful, uh, like I said, I'll put a string here and hang it, hang, put a knot in it and hang it from that and you can roll it up because it is scroll art. And if you have your string at the top, you can kind of wrap the string around it and hold it. So. <clears throat> excuse me so it will uh, look like you can carry it a whole lot easier instead of carrying it around like this um, you can roll it up and have some scroll art put it on your you can hang it on your doorknob you can hang it on a push pin wherever you want to hang your Japanese scroll art so I hope you enjoy the lesson about Japanese culture and Japanese artwork like I said excuse me I will put some documents uh, on my Bitmoji classroom so you can see some of the images from the art that I was talking about, the Mount Fuji, the wave, uh, pagodas. That way you can actually see some of the images uh, in their artwork and then you can have your own artwork. So I hope you enjoy it and have a good day.